Good morning and happy Palm Sunday to you and to your family. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Our call to worship this morning comes from Zechariah chapter 9. Lo, your king comes to you, triumphant and victorious is he, humble and riding on a donkey. He shall command peace to the nations. We come to worship the God of peace. Alleluia. Amen. Let us come before God now with our prayers for forgiveness. This is the time when we can let go of all of those things that might separate us from God who loves us and yearns for a relationship with us. Loving and gracious God, give us sincerity we beseech thee, O God, saving us from the ancient sin of casting palm branches before you at the week's beginning and crucifying you before the week's end. From the ungenuine, lead us to the genuine. From the unreal to the real. Give us peace, O God. We are restless and irritated by life. The surface of our little pools is blown to anger and tumult by the winds of this present world. And unless the spirit of the living God brood over them, there shall be no order there. Give us friendliness, O oh God. Teach us the fine art of putting ourselves in others' places and seeing life as they must see it, so that our irritation may pass into understanding and our vindictiveness into friendly desire to help. I pause now for our silent prayers for forgiveness. Friends in Christ, be assured knowing that God came into the world through Christ so that our sins would be as far from us as the East is from the West. Be assured knowing that your sins are forgiven in Christ. Amen. Hello, I wanted to come out here for the children's sermon today. Um, I was feeling a little bit sad about not having palms for everyone. Um, and then I remembered something really cool. And that is when everyone was really, really, really excited that Jesus was coming into Jerusalem. What they did is they were so excited that they just cut down branches from the trees that were around them. They just grabbed what they had and they used them to line the streets so that when Jesus came into Jerusalem, he would come in knowing that they loved him. So every year on Palm Sunday, one of my traditions is to make a palm cross. 
and I thought I would make one out of stuff that I found around my yard. Um, so what this is, is it's a piece of a leaf from one of the flowers that's coming up. Um, but also if you had something like this, which is a leaf from last year, that would work too, or even a stick. So again, what you wanna do is you want to fold about, about a quarter of the way from the end and then turn your stick over. And this is the tricky part. You wanna do a little fold that is a 90 degree fold so that it already starts to look like half across, see? And then you just fold that piece over until it looks just like the arms of a cross. And then this part tucks in and you can make, you can just tuck it in so that it holds together. In some way, the palm crosses are even easier with a branch from your yard or a flower stem. Um, I also wanted to make sure that everyone had seen this. Um, what we're gonna be doing um, all this week, starting today, is we're asking people to print these out and decorate them and make them really wonderful and beautiful. And then you're gonna put these on the outside of your house or in a window so that people can see it from the outside of their house. That way, all during Holy Week, uh, we can celebrate by having a week-long Easter egg hunt where we go by each other's houses while we're walking the dog or out for a bike ride, and we can count the number of Easter eggs that we spot. And be sure to share this with your friends outside of Central too. We would love for everyone to get involved. So um, children, as we're apart this Sunday on this very special day, I hope that you and your family are celebrating with an egg hunt of your own. I hope that you've put on something really wonderful and springy and that you notice all the beautiful flowers that are outgrowing in your yard. But on top of all of that, I hope that you remember that Jesus came to Jerusalem because Jesus loves you so much. Jesus loves you and Jesus loves me. And that means that we are never separated from God, even during COVID-19. Let's pray. Loving and gracious God, please help us to remember that we are always together, even when we're separated to keep each other safe, that we are always with you. Please remind us of the ways that we're connected today. Help us to be kind to the people that we live with and to remember people who might need a friend. Help us to reach out by phone or text or Zoom or email or Facebook and to feel connected to our friends, to our family, and to our neighbors. We pray this in your holy name. Amen. Okay, guys, thanks for coming out to my yard. Um, I hope to see you in church really soon. Oh, and please remember, we are still having our um, Lord's Prayer and 23rd Psalm Challenge. And that means I would love for you to memorize either or both of those, Lord's Prayer and 23rd Psalm. And if you run up to me when we're back together and you recite them, I will have a basket of prizes and you can choose one for each one that you remember. And actually, if you get them both, I might even throw in a third prize. Okay, everybody, be well and um, know that we love you very much, that we're praying for you and that, um, and that we can't wait to be back together. And if you would like a private tutorial on making one of these beautiful crosses for your home, um, feel free to give me an email and I can jump on Zoom and teach you. Have a great day. Bye-bye. This morning, I would like to share the peace of Christ with you. And so first of all, I hope that you can feel that peace that passes understanding, that peace that reaches beyond our pandemic and beyond our worries and beyond our fears and fills us with Christ's love because that is a gift from God. And so first of all, I ask and hope and pray for that peace to come into your heart. And next, I ask you to please go ahead and um, just think about someone that you haven't reached out to for a little while. Pick up your phone and look at your contact list or grab a, a church directory um, and find someone that you haven't reached out to for a little while. And I hope that during this time of peace that you can commit yourself to reaching out to one or two or even three people. Um, and to just share a friendly word with them. Let them know that you're thinking of them. Um, and I hope that you'll use this as a time to connect. The peace of Christ be with you and also with you. Amen.
welcome to this service of worship on Palm Sunday. We're glad to have you here. Uh, of course, uh, we know that you're not here with us in the sanctuary. Uh, we're doing this in an empty sanctuary today, uh, but we are uh, preserving our social distance and, uh, and being safe uh, while we do this. But it's good to be with you uh, this day on Palm Sunday. Um, there's a couple of announcements I want to bring to your attention. First of all, we invite you to join this week every day at noon on Facebook. Uh, we'll be doing live devotionals, uh, tracing uh, Jesus through uh, the course of Holy Week. We also uh, want to let you know that on Thursday evening, we will be broadcasting a Tenebrae worship service. That's Thursday evening at 7. It will premiere on our Facebook page and on YouTube. And we are planning to have an Easter Sunday service uh, available to you on Hometown Television and other platforms. Uh, that Easter Sunday service will go live at 10. Again, it's great to be with you this Palm Sunday. The scripture lesson for this morning is taken from the Gospel of Matthew. It's Matthew's story of the first Palm Sunday. It's in Matthew chapter 21, uh, beginning to read at verse 1. Listen and hear God's word. When they had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethpage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, the Lord needs them, and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and that followed were shouting, Hosanna! To the son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, Who is this? The crowds were saying, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. May God bless to our understanding this reading of God's holy word, and to God's name be glory and praise. Amen. Well, this certainly isn't our usual Palm Sunday. I'm looking out at this sanctuary here at Central Presbyterian Church in Summit, and the pews are empty. There are no kids that have been coming down the aisles with their palm fronds, waving them, or using them as swords. There's no Palm Sunday brunch, no Easter egg hunts, and the music that we so much love on this day is a little bit hollow sounding. This is not our usual Palm Sunday, and this will not be our usual Holy Week, our usual Easter. Everything is different. And yet maybe this is an opportunity. Maybe this is an opportunity to look at the stories of Holy Week with a whole new understanding and to see them in a whole new way. I mean, I remember the first time I heard Eric Clapton's acoustic version of his rock anthem, Layla. It was like hearing a completely new song. This year, maybe it will be like Palm Sunday and Holy Week and Easter have been unplugged. And without all the distractions of the holidays, as wonderful as those distractions are, maybe the stories will sound completely new to us. 
For instance, this Palm Sunday story in Matthew's Gospel, it starts with that odd detail that's unique to Matthew about Jesus riding on a donkey and a colt at the same time, which creates the weirdest picture in my mind, trying to imagine how Jesus pulled that off. But the rest of the story is there in all its familiar details. There's a large crowd, there are palm branches, there are the shouts of Hosanna. In the end of the story, at the very end of the story, there is another odd detail in Matthew's telling of it. Matthew tells us that when Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, who is this? Now that word, turmoil, is an interesting one, because what it literally means in the Greek is shaken, as in what happens during an earthquake, when the ground beneath your feet shakes, and everything around you that's familiar to you comes crumbling down. That story, with that detail, seems in some ways to be worlds apart from the sweet experience of, of having kids coming down the center aisle and waving palm branches. It seems Matthew wants us to understand that beginning on Palm Sunday, he is telling the story of some serious stuff that happened. Stuff that happened that was life-altering and world-changing. And it seems to me that's the kind of stuff we need to hear now. Our lives have been in turmoil this past month. As that pandemic has grown and spread all around the world. Our world has been shaken to its core. We've learned to do things in a new way. School, jobs, church. And in some ways it's hard to imagine things going back simply to how they used to be. You know, sitting in a crowded restaurant or theater. Or trying to get on that already jammed subway or bus. Now to be clear, I am not saying that Jesus, God, caused this turmoil. Indeed, when I hear people make statements like that, I'm kind of left thinking, that sounds to me an awful lot like crazy talk. Coming from folks who probably have never really understood what the Bible was about in the first place. I'm not saying that God has caused what's happened. And what I'm saying is that with God's help, maybe this turmoil that we've been experiencing is an opportunity to ask some serious questions about what really matters to us. I mean, as you've been going through all of this, have you wondered what life is going to be like on the other side of this? And not just the changes that are going to happen to you, but have you wondered what changes you might want to have happen? What changes you might want to make in your life? How you might want to reorder some of your priorities? What really matters to you? And what really is it? that brings you a sense of fulfillment and joy and peace. You know, I wonder if maybe that's 
the good that God wants to bring out of all of this. I wonder if maybe what God is prompting in the midst of this turmoil is for you and me to ask ourselves some really important questions. Knowing that whatever it is that begins in turmoil will end, we hope, we have faith in something like resurrection, in something like new life. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you that in Jesus you have come into our lives. You have come into the turmoil of our lives. Into this very time when it seems that the very earth under our feet is shaking and we are left wondering what will be left on the other side. Gracious God, we ask that you would give us the grace and the strength to ask the questions that we must ask of ourselves and to build the life that we want to build for ourselves. We pray for all of those in positions of authority we ask that you would give them wisdom, that you would guide them to do the right thing, the good thing. We lift up before you all of those who continue to work to keep things moving and working for all of us. The truckers, and the store clerks, the postal workers, Gracious God, we especially lift before you healthcare workers who are on the front lines and who risk their lives to help people who are sick. And we pray for those who are sick. We pray for those who are dying. And we pray for those who now must walk the pathway of grief. in ways that are hard to grasp, help us to find ways to communicate to all of those who suffer that they are not alone. That not only are you with them, but so are we. Holy God, we pray for your grace. We pray for your mercy. We pray for your kindness. Come and walk into our lives. 
lead us through this week, through the turmoil and the uncertainty, and bring us to a place where you will make all things new through Christ, in whose name we pray as we were taught, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We come to a time of offering, and again, it's very different to do offering in these days. And yet there is a way for you to make an offering to Central Church. You can go onto our website, and if you keep scrolling down, you'll find a place where it says Give Plus, and you can give to Central Presbyterian Church online, and we would certainly appreciate your gift at this time. You can also, if you're a member, mail in your contribution using your offering envelope, or you can just mail us a check at 70 Maple Street in Summit, New Jersey, and we would, again, be really, really happy to receive that. We also want to encourage you to find ways to give in the community, and if you go again on our website, you will find a variety of ways that you can give to people who are most in need. And we encourage you to do that. Take a look at the various opportunities for giving and pick one. And as family this week, do something together to help our neighbors who are in particular need during these difficult days. We ask that as you give, you give with a grateful heart. Not because you have to, but because you want to. In God's name, we invite your gifts. Amen.
service of worship has now ended, and we go to serve God in all that we say, in all that we do, in all who we are. None of us knows what we will face this week. For some, there will be great joy and triumph, and for others, there will be sadness and defeat. But whatever it is that we face this week, we do not face it alone. But we face it all in the strength and the power of the Almighty God, who is always near. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you and stay with you now and forever. Amen.